Hey, my Coffee with Brenna friends, grab your beverage, grab your Bible. It's time for Coffee with Brenna. I'm drinking water today. You may have heard of it. I highly recommend it. We drink out of jars in my house, and so this is my pink rubber band to show that it's my jar. So this morning I had a funny experience. We have, right over here in my house, a laundry room. It actually is technically a converted garage. So half of it is like storage and half of it, probably more like a third of it is a laundry room and two thirds of it is storage. But there is a switch for it on either side of the room because of course, if you're coming in from the outside, you need to have a switch there. And if you're coming from the house, you need to have a switch there. And so I come in and I can't make the light turn on which generally means something tripped a breaker. So I'm in there with my phone, uh, flashlight, trying to figure it out. But uh, what happened was the switch from leaving the house, going into the laundry room from the main part of the house, wasn't on all the way. <laughs> I was already gonna talk about this, but I thought this was so appropriate that Today, we are continuing our Lasting Victory series, and we're talking about plugging into power. It, are you completely plugged into the power source, source, which is Jesus Christ? Are you completely plugged into the power source, which is Jesus Christ? Or is your switch only part of the way on? Love it when life gives me sermon illustrations. Plugging into power. When we're trying to achieve this lasting victory, Whose strength are we relying on? So I want to go through some scriptures with you. If you have read my book, this a lot of this is in Freedom Step 5, which is act like a free person. That makes it sound like it's about behavior, but it's not. If you make this about behavior, you're really missing the point. It's about plugging into the power source, using the right thing as your source of power. And when I looked in at BibleGateway.com for the word strength in scripture, it's in the Old Testament. I, I'm not positive, actually. It was well over a hundred times. I want to say it was in the high, very high hundreds. And then I think it was 37 times in the New Testament. But I was mainly looking. I wanted to find some of the letters and what they said about strength. Though there were some actual, there were some great verses from Revelation. There were some good verses in the gospel. It was hard to narrow it down. But twice when Paul is talking to Timothy, Timothy is Paul's Padawan learner, his protege, his like a son in the faith, he calls him. He says twice, once in 1 Timothy 1.12 and once in 2 Timothy 4.17, talks about how God gave him strength. And then we know the famous verse, in fact, we talked about it within the past few months, about Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, we talked about it in You Can Do Hard Things. And I looked up, I was looking up all these words for strength in the Greek, and some of them are nouns, and some of them are verbs, and the English doesn't always do those nuances justice. But this was a verb in Philippians 4.13, and it means actually means to empower or invigorate. <laughs> and I think sometimes one of the reasons it's hard to continue to rely on God's strength is because we think God has lost patience with us. This battle has been going on a long time. I've been dealing with this a long time, Lord. You must have lost patience, lost patience with me by now. No, You've, you've probably lost it with yourself. I know I have, but he hasn't lost patience with you. He wants to empower you. He wants to invigorate you. And we can see that in many places in scripture. There are so many good prayers in the Bible, and I'm going to point some of them out to you. And I pick one. I want you to pick one, okay? So as I'm going through this, say, God, help me know in my heart which one of these prayers is for me. Paul in Ephesians 1 verses 18 through 20. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. I have this memorized in a different translations, translation. In the saints, it says, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. 
That power is the same as the mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. You will have to read that in the new NIV because I just kind of meshed them together. But the str same strength that raised Christ from the dead is available to us, is in us. That's Ephesians 1. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 through 17. Another prayer. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Same book of the Bible, chapter 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. There are several passages about our hearts being strengthened. Then in Colossians, chapter 1, verses 9 through 12. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. That one was long. Key, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. According to whose might? My might? No, his might. And I, I thought I put it in here, John 15, 5, where Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Oh, we try, 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 try to do stuff apart from him, don't we, friends? <laughs> Why do we do that? We have like this supernatural God who raised his son from the dead. We have the Holy Spirit living in us and empowering us, and yet we try and do it ourselves. Another great passage. I love the prayer in Ephesians 3. Paul says, I pray, starting in verse 16, out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I, lo I love the whole, the whole passage and it continues. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp the love of Christ. And it goes on to talk about that. Power. His prayer was for power. Out of his glorious riches, out of God's glorious riches, Paul prayed that, that we would be strengthened with power. Whose power? God's power. And then Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Whose power? His power. Whose strength? His strength. Not my strength. We need to get this. We need to get this. We we cannot resist the devil without it. I have a video from last summer around this time called More and More Strength. I will link that in the notes. But in we talked about coming up with a plan last week for those moments of maybe, those times when you're tempted. And in those times, we can pray simple prayers. Simple prayers when we're needing God's strength. Help now. God, help now. I need you. This is hard, God. And if you know, if you've ever been part of 12-step programs, they have a simple prayer they pray. This isn't exactly it, but this is how I always thought of it. I can't. God can. I'm going to let God. I can't, God. I can't resist this. But you can, and you can strengthen me so I can. So I'm going to let you, God. I'm going to let you. And I want to end with, with a favorite of mine. It's actually one of my three passages for this year. Not the whole thing, but I'm going to read you the whole thing in Isaiah 40, verse 28 through 31. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. You might, if you're a longtime watcher of Coffee with Brenna, you probably remember me singing this to you. <laughs> because 
When I was in high school, I sang at a friend's church and we sang this song. She probably doesn't remember it. It was probably one of 50 choir songs she did during her time at that church, but it was the one and I remember it. And that's because God's word does not return void. It's powerful. He goes on to say, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Is your hope in a life that's free of temptation? Is your hope in the strength that you think you can muster up, your willpower to resist temptation? Or is your hope in the Lord who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. That's in Ephesians. That's in the that Ephesians 3 prayer just after the part that I read. So whose strength are you willing to plug into power today? Whose strength, whose power are you going to use for victory? But I'm, my encouragement to you is to pick one of these prayers. I think all of them were Paul's, right? Yes, they were all from Paul. Pick one of these prayers. You can see the numbers. Actually, I'll put the whole verses in the show notes, okay? And you can look over them again. And which one, God? I have the Ephesians 1 prayer and the Ephesians 3 prayer memorized because for a while I was praying that Ephesians 3 prayer for a certain group of people and just saying it over and over again, I memorized it. So you don't have to memorize it, but if you pray it for yourself over and over again, these prayers are in the Bible for a reason. So pick a prayer, pray it for yourself, and see what God will do because it's his strength. We are promised strength. We are promised power. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for my Coffee with Brenna listeners and watchers, Lord God. I'm really enjoying this Lasting Victory series, Lord God, and I believe, I trust, because your word does not return void, you are doing something in our hearts and lives. I, I pray you would help them to know which prayer to pick to pray for themselves in those challenging moments, Lord God, and that today, in this moment, and in moments of maybe to come, Lord, we would rely on your strength. Whose strength? Your strength. Whose power? Your power, not mine, because apart from you, we can do nothing. And we pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, friends. Thank you for joining me. I would love to hear comments, any ideas for this series or a series to come. Until next time, thanks for joining me for Coffee with Brenna.